Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the weekending September 3rd. First up, this was sent in by Michael J. Actually, he didn't send it to me directly. I caught it because he posted it on Facebook. Um, from Mental Floss, this assisted living facility is designed to look like a neighborhood. I'm going to post two of the pictures here. There's a picture of the outdoor scene where you can actually come outside your room and sit on a front porch in a rocking chair. They have a, a working sky that will actually change from day to night. And then they've got another interior view, too, that looks kind of like, oh, I don't know, a little downtown area with shops and stuff like that. But it's strictly an assisted living area, and this is in Ohio. It says, I'll read a little bit from the article here. While you may not be able to relive your youth, the chain of assisted living facilities in Ohio is giving residents the opportunity to at least revisit the setting of their younger years on the name of health. The Lantern Assisted Living Locations recently garnered attention after a Reddit user posted a photo of the interior of the chain's the chain's Chagrin Valley outlet. Others in Madison and Saybrook, the centers are designed to look like a community of the 1930s or 40s and uh, look like homes complete with porches, rocking chairs, grass-like carpet, and a fiber optic ceiling that transitions from night to day. Uh, I think that would be really cool, too. I mean, I don't know. That would be something kind of fun to live in. I think even a vacation or something like that myself. Uh, only thing lacking, like I like I posted on Facebook, only thing lacking is uh, do they hire kids to uh, run up and down on the fake uh, grass carpet so you can yell at the kids to get off your lawn. But anyway, if you get a chance, check that out. All the links to all the stories I'm talking about will be posted down in the description below. This one's from Popular Science. Explosion at SpaceX rocket launch site at Cape Canaveral. Yeah, they were doing the refueling, and they even had the uh, satellite from Facebook that was going to give... Uh, uh, internet access to a lot of third world countries on board and during the refueling I guess an explosion happened and destroyed the whole thing. It was going to be the first chance that SpaceX was going to refly a rocket that had landed successfully and uh, been able to use it again but it's just not in the cards for them. They've had a lot of uh, bad luck with that first trying to get it to land and then to try to get it to go back in space again after a successful landing. So um, it says right now as of now the exact cause of the explosion is unknown but the anomaly, as SpaceX is calling it, appears to have started while the rocket was being loaded with propellant. SpaceX founder Elon Musk chimed in on Twitter to this effect as well. Loss of Falcon vehicle today during propellant fill operation originated around upper stage oxygen tank. Case still unknown more soon. And the satellite was the Amos 6, a 12,125 pound satellite that would have been the heaviest payload launched by SpaceX today. And uh, yeah, by the founder of Space uh, Facebook because... Uh, so Mark's, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO, is kind of disappointed, but he says he's also got other things and plans to uh, uh, back up plans so that it's not going to totally stop the spread of Internet in the third world countries. So <clears throat> he's working on some options besides that, and I'm sure they'll probably redo it or maybe have insurance coverage or something like that and give it another shot at putting it up in the air. This next one is from my friend Tom H. Hear me now, strong signal from a sun-like star. Sparks Alien Speculation from uh, SETI.org. And uh, this was just a, a signal that was detected. Uh, an international team of, well, I'll, I'll just read. The signal from HD 164595 is intriguing because it comes from the vicinity of a sun-like star and it's artificial. And if it's artificial, its strength is great enough that it was clearly made by a civilization with capabilities beyond those of humankind. Astronomer Douglas Vekoch, president of METI International, which searches for Life Beyond Earth tells CNN. Uh, I believe this is a Russian team of uh, astronomers that uh, caught this signal. But exploring it a little bit more, it's not really unusual to have this kind of a strong type of signal, too. This um, happens quite often, and the SETI project even talks about that, too. And I've got a link to a pop science article um, that I'll put right below the uh, SETI article, and it talks about... Um, Today we are again among the first attempt to crush our dreams by reporting on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Official statement on the matter, it's, it wasn't coming from space, the signal came from Earth, they say. In the, framework, in the framework of this program, an interesting radio signal at a wavelength of 2.7 centimeters was detected in the direction of one of the objects, HD 164595, in 2015. Subsequent process and analysis of the signal revealed its most probable terrestrial origin. You have to remember, this equipment is so, so sensitive. I mean, I imagine if you got anywhere close to uh, any of these dishes to pick up the signals and even uh, uh, keyed down a transmitter that had no, no more than a watt, you would probably just totally um, overload it. So, yeah, 
looks like this is just another one that can be chopped up to, uh, you know, a terrestrial signal just overloading the thing. But um, nice to dream. It might happen someday. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit of science fiction, too. I know uh, the TDD report is mostly about science, but once in a while we stray a little bit. And um, I like science fiction, too. I think most geeks that are into science love science fiction. I mean, a lot of engineers got their start as scientists by uh, watching episodes of Star Trek or watching Star Wars. Well, um, Netflix has confirmed season two for Stranger Things. I don't know if you've caught it as an original series. You can also, if you look around the right kind of sites, you can find it too, even if you don't have Netflix. But uh, I found it really, really excellent. I've watched the complete first season. Uh, I think it's a lot better than Black Mirror. I've tried, I tried the first three episodes of Black Mirror. They say it's a it's a new version of Twilight Zone. I, it just wasn't really impressing me too much. I think the third episode, I turned it off about halfway through it because it was just getting so boring. And I don't think it really had good acting, good special effects or anything. Now, I'll have to say, this uh, hit flicks, uh, this hit on uh, Netflix, uh, Stranger Things, is not a real big budget science fiction thing. It's got um, really good acting, but there's no superstars on it. Although, you know, Winona Ryder's pretty well known. But it's a lot of just uh, not really well known actors and actresses. But they do a really good job with the story. Um, special effects, yeah, they're not top notch. I mean, some of it's uh, using, you know, as best as they can on a low budget, but I think they really did a good job with it, and I'm looking forward to season two myself. So um, let me know in the comments if you've caught Stranger Things. Uh, what do you think of Stranger Things compared to Black Mirror? Or if you've only seen Black Mirror, do you really like it? And I, I do have friends that think it's really great. They think it is a, a second coming of Twilight Zone, or almost as good, even though I don't agree, disagree, whatever. Put it down in the comments. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.